I'm gonna show you guys how I made $67,000 with a new clothing brand and how you can too with your own clothing brand I'm gonna be going over the marketing strategies and literally everything and I want to just like let this be known right now that I'm not an influencer This brand right here was not an influencer backed brand and this brand is not big at all So without further ado, let's actually see the results All right So I joined this brand in July as an equity partner like I pretty much own this brand as well now around July So beginning of summer and in that time frame of me joining till now, I was able to pretty much take this brand to $67,000 in sales, which is really good. And you guys see, I just refreshed it. And this is actually pretty decent numbers for, you know, just starting out for what they had. So it's a few things you guys are probably looking at as well that might kind of like throw you off is this conversion rate is really, really low. And the reason for that being is most of this brand's traffic is from TikTok. And we all know TikTok is a lot of just younger folks who are just adding to cart and never buying. But it was way worse than this, believe it or not, before this. It was like a 0.20%, which is actually kind of crazy. So yeah, I'm basically going to show you guys how I pretty much took this brand from nothing to $67,000 in those 90 days. I'll even give you guys a profit check right here as well. This is Triple Whale. It's a software where you can see all your analytics in depth. Um, and I'll hit a refresh on Triple Whale as well. Yeah, so on Triple Whale, you guys see we actually did 72000 dollars in these 90 days um, with a net profit of 14k now this net profit should have been way more i'm going to explain why it wasn't right now so the biggest issue with this brand right here is they have a very low returning customer rate so their net profit is always going to be lower because it's always first orders and new customers another thing was was these returns okay so this brand right here is a pre-order brand and as you guys know my main my main main brand is a pre-made brand so my returns and all this stuff is going to be a lot lower but for this newer brand we didn't want to invest a lot of capital to start because it's a newer brand you know what i mean so we had four thousand dollars in returns chargebacks um issues like that because of you know being pre-orders and people complaining and add another like 600 requested so like damn near four thousand dollars in returns and that could have just went straight to the bottom line so that was one reason why the net profit was pretty bad i mean we still netted 20 percent net margin which is pretty good but yeah it could have been way way higher if we had that extra net profit um from the returns not happening taxes was another one payment processing but i guess that stuff is standard and another thing is when we first got into this brand the cost of goods were really really high for this brand they had really bad cost of goods so it didn't change until about recently that's when we actually was able to get it lowered i have a factory in china now my own personal factory um and i'm able to get really really cheap rates for brands that are like you know doing volume so if you guys want to check that out that'll be linked down below if you need a manufacturer but yeah overall these stats are not bad i'm pretty happy with the stats of this brand and once we get this brand off of pre-order switch to pre-made constantly drop new products every single month and just load a ton of ad creatives we're gonna actually scale so let me actually show you the strategy all right so the first thing was the website now i'm not gonna leak this brand so we're just gonna use my website as an example for my other brand my main one and it's pretty much the exact same website like literally the same template and everything and i i pretty much set it up the same way so on the product page this is probably the most important page you guys see we have reviews uh the variant picker um a good description right here shipping and return questions sizing all this the, like the point of the product page is to answer all the main questions people are going to ask like sizing shipping and return times now another thing is as well is having reviews having reviews is so so crucial to your product page it just adds social proof and lets people know like this is a legit brand the next thing was we had really good product photos for this brand we added a new photo shoot to the product page conversion rate was like a 0.20 percent now it's 0.60 percent which is still not the best but then again remember the traffic is majority from tiktok and then we had more social proof under the product page it's pretty simple just you know show people that people are actually buying this and wearing this brand um, and then that's it the product page is very very simple um if you guys want to just copy this layout this is a winning product page you guys don't have to sit there and make a hypothesis if it's not proven it's worked for us okay next is the actual marketing strategies and i'm going to go over the first one which was influencer marketing now we wanted to get five to ten influencers weekly for this brand just to get people to just do get ready with me's was the main content type we were looking for and fit of the days and stuff like that just showing off the product and the way we did that as well was sending these influencers the products influencer promotes it and then we would give them their own unique affiliate code where they can make commission so most influencers we didn't have to pay any money up front to get the content we were just giving them commission-based deals and you can do this with your own brand if you guys don't have a lot of money to spend on like promotions and stuff like that you could just do commission-based deals so an example of the influencer marketing we were doing for this brand like i said this is my mains brand influencer marketing we did but not the brand that i'm talking about you see we just did get ready with me's having creators you know post get ready with me's because these typically convert the best i've noticed that get ready with me's and fit of the days are the best type of content one they convert really well two 
that's content that you could like put up into your own creatives pretty easy like you can take this content put your own captions you know put it together with other pieces of content and it works really really well so that's just basically the example of the content we were requesting and yeah we were just doing this five to ten times a week um so we had constant fresh content to work with with our ads so if we go to triple well we can see the biggest driver of revenue for this brand was definitely ads we spent 18 grand on ads to make back seventy two thousand dollars in revenue which is roughly a 4x ROAS on the business overall, which is really, really good considering this brand has not the best organic traffic. I don't think we even did any organic marketing for this brand. I think it was mainly just purely ads and influencers. And I would say ads did about 90% of the work because remember with influencers, we were just using it for the content. Okay, so looking at the actual ad manager, we like I said, this software is called Triple Whale and it just gives you a way, way, way more accurate look at your numbers. So you guys might think this looks really confusing. Don't click off just yet. I'm gonna break it down to what each number pretty much did for the brand. So if we could look TikTok ads right here, carried majority of our spend we had you know ten thousand dollars spent on tiktok ads and we were able to come back at a 2.26 ROAS. Now, is this ROAS quite low? Yes and no. We were doing volume of spend, so this ROAS is perfectly fine at this volume of spend, but we definitely do wanna improve this ROAS. The way we're gonna improve the ROAS is just having new creatives constantly and finding more winning ads, which is definitely the hardest part about scaling a brand is just continuously finding new winning ads. So yeah, we can see TikTok generated us $24,000 of this $72,000 in revenue, which is really, really good. Now, here's the thing about what I was trying to tell you guys earlier about tiktok ads as you guys see we had 41,000 sessions from tiktok ads and i'm going to tell you it's probably even more um because of organic and social as well and the conversion rate for this was 0.79 percent which is not bad but it combines with this organic and social for the most part because the thing about tiktok ads we've noticed is people who look at your tiktok ads usually will not buy directly off your tiktok ads as well um, you would just have a bunch of, you know, kids that are just adding to cart, you know, ruining your conversion rate. And then on top of that, TikTok has something we call overflow, where a lot of people just come search up your brand organically on Google or anything like that from TikTok app and just not buy from the TikTok app directly um, because they want to do more research. So the conversion rates are going to be really, really low because you have such insane amount of traffic. Um, and it's typically a younger audience. But if you could see with Facebook ads right here, we did a 1.51% conversion rate, which is really, really good. Um, and we had about a 2.40 ROAS, which is actually very, very solid um, for Facebook as well. And this is that volume, remember, a lot of purchases. We did $14,000 in new customer revenue, $16,000 in just total revenue, which is really, really good. And the ad strategy that we're actually running is very, very simple. It's a simple campaign structure where we just have one campaign that's broad and we let Facebook do all the targeting. Now, if you guys wanna learn more about ads, I made a video, I think I uploaded it before this video, where I went in depth about ads and my actual strategy. Don't watch that yet until the end of this video. So overall, looking at the ads, um, Facebook and TikTok ads, like I said, are the biggest uh, drivers. We have Google ads as well, but these play more of a bottom of the funnel uh, type of thing, which means they're just kind of scooping up that excess traffic. We might actually turn these off because yes, they're profitable, but it's really not doing too much for the business. We might turn these off and re-strategize on Google ads oh yeah we also did about eight thousand dollars in referrals people just telling their friends about it like hey you should buy this brand and that's why I always tell people word of mouth is still one of the most powerful forms of marketing people love you know when their friends tell them about a new product because they know it's trusted and they have social proof behind it so how do you get word of mouth focus on making a good product if you make a good product people are naturally gonna go talk about it and tell their friends and you see that generated $8,000 for us. Now, the next thing was email marketing. So we had about 30% of the total revenue being done through email marketing. And the way we did this was just having, you see $19,000 come from flows. So what are flows? Flows are just automations, right? So, so for example, if you go to my website, when somebody would, you know, add a product to cart, for example, and then they just, you know, exited it off the website, this would send them an email letting them know like, hey, here's a discount code. We saw you checking out this product make sure to buy it and check it out um that abandoned cart generated us four thousand dollars which is really really good and then the next flow we had was a welcome series which is basically like a 10 percent discount code so when they would sign up to the pop-up on the website we'd give them a 10 percent discount code and that's what the welcome series did and then we made another 3.7k off of campaigns which is actually pretty good 16 percent of revenue coming from campaigns this is just us sending out twice a week campaigns straight to their inbox letting them know to come by or if we drop the new product and things like that. 
so that's our email marketing numbers and how we were able to do that with email marketing really just to sum everything up what was the biggest driving factors in this brand's success how we're gonna scale it to 100k a month hopefully what's today october hopefully by november we want to get it to 100k a month just because it's going to be q4 number one this brand had a good product product is the biggest lever you can pull if you want to get more sales if you can make a really good product people want to wear and make a good offer around it like a good price and something that people are willing to pay for it then you're going to succeed no matter what because product is everything the next thing was the website was really really good we had like i showed you guys the website optimized and etc and the last thing was ads you guys can see ads was a pretty sizable portion of the revenue for this brand as well and since i'm an owner of this brand i want to be able to grow this to 100k a month and have multiple brands under my belt doing 100k a month so here's what we're going to do to scale this brand to 100k a month next month and some notes you guys can take down from us number one we're going to switch to pre-made shipping so basically meaning we ship in two to three days this will then allow us to have better fulfillment better customer service which then leads to more returning customers you know which means just more profit in general and just overall higher revenue the next thing is just having more volume and better ad creatives because if we can raise our ROAS up to a three at scale which means you know spending a lot of money at a three ROAS profitably or I wouldn't be surprised if we hit 200k a month with this brand by just fixing those two things alone the last thing is dropping new products monthly we can constantly drop new products that means we're gonna get even more returning customers and you guys could probably tell right now my biggest goal is to get more returning customers because then that allows us to spend more on acquiring new customers because now we know the profit is gonna be coming from those returning customers so yeah that's how I scaled this new brand to around seventy two thousand dollars I hope you guys found some value out of this and learned something new if you guys do want a more in-depth guide free training on how to go from zero to 10k a month in 90 days or less with your own brand then make sure to check out that link down below in the description if you guys want me to mentor you with your own brand and help you double your your sales or just get to your first 10k a month working with me directly and that link will also be down below as well i hope you guys enjoyed this video sorry that i was sick this video but i will see you in the next one